Nightscape photography or astrophotography is the art of photographing the night sky. Shooting in the dark can be a challenge, so knowing what telescope or camera lens to get can be a bit overwhelming at first. Whether that be through a telescope or a camera lens, cool dedicated astronomy camera, just your basic DSLR, the end goal is still the same, to gather as much light as possible to create the best images you can. The main feature of any camera lens or telescope is how fast it can gather light, and that's determined by an F number, usually found around the base of the lens or telescope, and the lower the number, the faster lens can gather light. So knowing how a lens performs can really help in your decision when purchasing the lens. So that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show you five lenses that I use for low light photography and astrophotography that I still use all the time and super nice for the price. And the best part is all of these lenses are under 500 bucks guys. So if you're searching for a good low light lens on a budget, stick around and hopefully you can get something out of this video and you can save some money too. prime lenses here that all perform very well under low light. I'm not going to go into uh, the full details of each lens, but rather just the main specs and what kind of results you can expect with each one of them. We'll take a look at some image examples uh, as well as how the stars look when we really open these lenses up. And really that will reveal many of the flaws in the lens and in my opinion is probably the best test you can perform to check how well a lens is going to perform for astrophotography. So first up we have the Canon autofocus 50 millimeter f 1.8 aka the nifty 50 and this lens comes in right around 125 bucks new if you're willing to uh, go use you can even find one cheaper than that and honestly for the price and what you get with this lens might make it the best all-around bang for your buck prime lens ever i mean 125 bucks and you get autofocus and a nice fast 1.8 aperture Sweet deal, guys. This lens is actually the first choice for a lot of beginners, me as well. Picked mine up about five years ago and still seems to surprise me anytime I find myself using it. One of my Canon 80D Astro Modified and this one was F1.8, this one was F2, this one's F2.8, and this one's F4. And right away we can see there's pretty significant chromatic aberrations. Um, it looks like it's a little out of focus here, but it's not. That's just what it looks like wide open. You can see in the corners, uh, the stars are starting to look really wonky. They kind of look like birds. Um, they're kind of the same in every corner. Um, they look like a bunch of little birds. So we'll come up here to F2. We can see the vignetting got a little better. Uh, the chromatic aberration looks a little better, but it's still pretty significant. The birds in the corner again and f4 uh chromatic aberration is still apparent in the very corners the this star looks really good here um, there's still a little bit of chromatic aberration here um, stars are starting to clean up they look more like stars now and at f5.6 uh, stars look pretty acceptable in the corners um, Chromatic aberration is basically gone. All right, so next we have the wide angle Samyang 14 millimeter F 2.8 manual lens. And this lens new comes in around 275 or 300 bucks, but I'm sure you could pick one up uh, cheaper going used. I actually think they made a series two version of this lens that offers weather sealing and a focus locking tension ring. So that might actually be the better choice, but I haven't had a chance to test that one out yet. So we'll just stick with version one for this video. What I really love about this lens is how wide the field of view is. It does a very good job capturing really wide field Milky Way nightscape images as well as time lapses. It is a bit slower than any of the other lenses here, but I've had this lens probably going on three years now and I still find myself using it all the time. All right, I have three images here I've captured with my modified Canon 80D and this one was shot at f2.8, this one's f4, and this one is f5.6. Okay, so we'll look at the f2.8 first, and right away we can see there's some pretty heavy uh, vignetting in the corners. That's to be expected on a wide angle lens. Um, we'll zoom in here to the corners. Stars are looking pretty stretched and wonky in the corners, but not too bad. Chromatic aberration looks pretty good. 
Um, stars in the middle look a little out of focus, but not too bad. So we'll jump here to the F2, F4, and you can see the vignetting got a little better, and stars in the corner are looking a little better. The middle looks pretty good. Uh, let's jump here to the F5.6, and right away the vignetting looks a little better, but it's still there. Stars in the corner and edges look pretty good. Chromatic aberration looks good. Um, so, yeah, I would shoot it probably F4 on this one, guys. All right, next up is the famous Rokinon 135 F2 manual lens. And to this day, this is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite lens for wide field deep space imaging and delivers crisp, sharp images with uh, very little chromatic aberrations. This lens is uh, considered as a medium range telephoto lens. And in my opinion, the 135 millimeter focal length is kind of a sweet spot for tons of these wide field nebulae targets. This lens has been and still is used by many astrophotographers around the world and new this lens comes in right around 500 bucks but again going used will bring the price down even more I have used this lens for a lot of different projects over the past few years and honestly I forget sometimes it's even a camera lens this thing performs so well for astrophotography it's no wonder why it still continues to be a favorite for uh, many astrophotographers and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon uh, right away you can see here at f2 um, vignetting is very well handled um, the corners look very good stars look pretty round there's very little chromatic aberrations i'm telling you guys this thing is a beast for astrophotography um, you can see here stars just look really good yeah um, we got a star cluster here that looks pretty good um, so we'll jump here to f2.8 and you can see the vignetting instantly got better. It's almost gone completely. I do still see a little bit here. We'll zoom in here and look at the star cluster. Looks really good. Um, this star looks even better. So we'll look here at the bottom star. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration here, but not much to complain about at all. Um, stars in the corner look good. The edges look good. We'll jump here to F4 and you can see chromatic aberration is completely gone vignetting is completely gone um, the star cluster looks really good you can actually start to see some color around these dimmer stars next up we have the irix dragonfly 45 millimeter f 1.4 semi-manual lens and i absolutely love this lens guys brand new i picked up my copy right around 500 bucks two years ago and the price might have went up a little bit on these uh, depending on where you look but you can definitely find one used under 500 bucks this lens delivers super sharp crisp images as well as being weather sealed and even though it is a manual focus lens it has built-in aperture control and focus assisting which it basically beeps whenever you're in focus and this lens was originally intended to replace my nifty 50 but uh, now I have two lenses basically the same focal length but the Nifty 50 does have autofocus that uh, definitely comes in handy when I'm shooting vlogs or videos, so I ended up just keeping them both. The 45 millimeter focal length is a very nice field of view uh, that is basically the same field of view that you see with your eyes. You can get super nice details in the Milky Way, and the 1.4 aperture means you can achieve a pretty bright image in just about five seconds. All right, so this is at f1.4, and you can see there's a little bit of vignetting in the corners. And if we zoom in here, stars look pretty good. They do kind of have this little wonkiness to them. Um, they do look a little distorted here on the edges at 1.4. And we can see a little bit of chromatic aberration here. And looks about the same over here. Maybe this side is a little bit better. All right, so now let's take a look at f2. Um, stars look a little better. Still have this artifact around the star here. Still looking a little stretched in the corners and edges. This corner looks a little better. Um, vignetting looks about the same. Alright, so now we're at f2.8 and everything looks pretty good now. Stars are looking nice in the middle. The artifact is gone. Let's look at the corners, looking better. Now this is 
f4. This is what I normally shoot at with this lens. Um, it gives you nice diffraction spikes on the brighter stars. Um, stars look good up here. Um, all the way to the edge, basically. And they look a lot better at f4. Nice. And last but not least, we have the Rokinon 24mm f1.4 manual lens. And this is my newest addition to my lens arsenal. And I picked this one up used uh, for around $285 a couple months ago. But I think you could probably find one cheaper than that, depending on where you look. I haven't had a whole lot of chances to use this lens due to weather, but I've done enough to at least do a star test, a few time lapses, and a couple nightscape images. Um, the only thing I really noticed about this lens is the focus focus tension is a little looser than I like and my copy didn't really come with a dew shield or anything like that but uh, they do normally come with a kind of light shield or something like that. Right away you can see at 1.4 we have really heavy vignetting in the corners, um, purple chromatic aberration around brighter uh, stars here but in the middle it looks pretty good. It will go on to f2 and you can see the corners get a little better um, as far as vignetting goes still have birds around the edges so we'll move on to f 2.8 it's looking pretty good chromatic aberration you can see a little bit here but that isn't too bad the vignetting got a lot better we move on to f4 you can see the vignetting gets a lot better um, it's almost gone now this star is looking really good edges are getting better they look more like stars now. Guys, that's gonna be about it for this one. I did post a few videos a while back that go into more detail about a few of these lenses. And if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below or uh, you can click the screen here to check those out. If you're new to the channel or found this video helpful, consider subscribing to the channel, turning on all notifications so you don't miss any of my video uploads. Also, if you uh, wanna support the channel, you can give this video a thumbs up so it can spread to more people and maybe help someone else out. If any of you have tried any other lenses under 500 bucks, let me know in the comments and how you like it. I'm curious to see what else is out there that might be worth picking up. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Remember to stay safe out there. I wish you good luck, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.